All right, welcome back. And if you're still, if you're just joining us, you're watching Daybreak on Trust TV. It's now time for the newspaper review. Uh, let's take a look at what the headlines uh, are on the nation's dailies are actually saying this beautiful morning. Now we'll begin with Daily Trust newspaper, and we have the lead story here that talks about old Naira notes. Nigerians await decision, lament hardships. Writers on that story say traders reject notes, demand government's compliance, and then order Apex Bank now. Ondo government urges Buhari presidency, CBN silent. And for more details of uh, this story, you can go to page six of Daily Trust newspaper uh, to get more information on this. And just below the story is uh, a pictorial of motorist queuing at Feeling Station, even as fuel scarcity resurfaces in the federal capital territory. Now, more stories here. After elections, Nigerians queue to buy petrol at high rate. You can find details of that story on page 27. PDP governors, NWC, others protest Tinubu's victory today. Uh, bandits kill Kano village head, Zamfara DPO, Inspector Vigilante. You can find more of that on page 45. ISWAP kills 200 Boko Haram terrorists, families in clash. Now we have more stories on the footnote there. Rainstorm destroys 105 houses in Ekiti State. Governorship polls, INEC goes to court over Beaver's reconfiguration. And uh, the final story on the front page of Daily Trust newspaper is analysts seek patrol subsidy removal, tax, exchange rate reform. Details on page 28. Now we'll move on to more papers. The next newspaper we're looking at is the Nation newspaper, and the major story on the front page goes Tinibus pledged to Nigerians, I will not disappoint you. And the riders here that say, My certificate of return is a World Cup trophy, President elect says in Lagos. And um, there's a pictorial there of the, of the President elect visiting the Oba of Lagos on, right there on the front page. Nigeria's debt profile hits 50 trillion naira. There's another story on the front page of uh, the Nation newspaper. And talking about politics, parties realign ahead of Saturday's governorship poll. Twin man, 26, riding bicycle from Katsuna to congratulate Tinubu in Lagos is another story on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Moving towards the top of the front page there, above the masthead, obey Supreme Court judgment on Naira now. Illegal giants tell Buhari. And details of that story can be found on page 18. And PDP leaders to picket INEC office over poll results. That is on page 4. And Raystorm destroys 105 houses in Ekiti community. And um, another story here, right on the front page of The Nation, reads, Masha becomes U.S.-based G24 director. Now, these are the major stories on the front page of The Nation newspaper this morning. All right, with that, uh, we'll move on to the Punch newspaper. Uh, still on presidential poll, uh, that's the big story on Punch. PDP governors, leaders to protest at INEC today. We have writers that say uh, PDP insists election flawed. APC urges peaceful demonstration. Residents fear unrest, hoodlums hijack, police promise protection. And uh, below uh, the uh, story, there is a pictorial of uh, uh, the president-elect uh, visiting the uh, Oba Akiolu and promises not to disappoint Nigerians. Now, beside that pictorial, prepare for severe flooding. Nema warns Nigerians. Uh, details on page 38. Soldiers shoot 15-year-old boy KK operator dead in Lagos. That is a sad one there. And uh, at the top of the page, Akbabio, Kalu, others begin battle for Senate presidency. Few FX subsidies removal will save federal government 10 trillion naira, says reports. And then on page 42, observers demand REC's prosecution for alleged sabotage. And just beside the name mask there, uh, on uh, Whitney, Lagos alleges lapses, says Chrisland remains shot. And these are some of the stories on the Punch newspaper. Next, we'll take a look at the Guardian newspaper. And the major story on the front page reads, E-payment channels fail stress tests despite banks' 901 billion narrow profit. 
And it comes with riders here that says no respite from apps, USSD platforms as failure reaches peak after 100 billion Naira investment. Concerns as hackers wipe 2.9 billion Naira from fintech firm. Attack rises, raises concern over safety of digital first banks. And telecom operators absolve cells of banking crisis. Riders continue with NIBBS. NIBSS keeps mum on rate of e-payment transaction failures and experts tax financial institutions on secure e-payment space. Now, that's, those are the riders supporting the major story on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Going towards the bottom of the front page there, still talking Nara redesign. Nara redesign, Buhari CBN yet to respond to Supreme Court ruling three days after. And now switching over to politics, Rivers APC splits into three as X Aid announces Amechi's sacking, declares self leader. Details of that can be found on page 18. Towards the top of the front page, below the masthead, 2023 elections allow legal process to take course. U.S. government urges Nigerians. That, is, that can be found on page three. Boko Haram abducts seven villagers in Borno, and that is on page 30. Obasiki accuses Oshomole of impeachment plot. And finally, on the front page of the Guardian newspaper, my life still under threat, Rivers Coalition officer cries out. All right, away from that is Nigerian Tribune. And uh, from the top of the page there, Tinubu promises not to disappoint Nigerians, visits Oba Kiolu with certificate of return. Now, Atiku to Yakubu, your promise of credible governorship election is medicine after death. We also have a February 25th presidential election failed to meet Nigerians' expectation, says U.S. Ambassador. And Nido faults INEC for failure to ensure transmission of results to IREV. Now, the big story here says PDP to protest at INEC direct members to dress in black. Labour Party in Oyo adopts Makin Day. Uh, Labour governorship candidate says, I remain committed to winning this election. Bandits kill DPO, sergeant vigilante abducts women in Zamfara State. Now, we also have a pictorial there of many homeless, even as rainstorms blows roofs off buildings in Ekiti State. And with that, uh, we wrap up stories on Nigerian Tribune. Next, we'll take a look at the Blueprint newspaper. The major story on the front page is Ohanezi Indigo speaks. God hasn't destined Obi's presidency for 2023. And Ryder Seattle says, Tinubu capable, victory well deserved. Hails Obi for unprecedented change in structureless LP. Cautions on the use of Lagos votes to persecute Indigo. Details of that story can be found on page 6. On page 24, you'll find a story, Cost of Nara Shoots Up Food Prices. And Tinubu Takes Victory Song Home, assures Lagosians, I won't disappoint. And the pictures there on the front page just show the president-elect with the Oba of Lagos. And right beside that is a picture of the vice president-elect, Kashim Shatima, with the, his eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, at the installation of the new Emir of Duzi. Towards the bottom of the front page there is another story. Anambra, domestic worker, cuts off women's genitals for money rituals. That is on page five. And um, elections, police insist all allowances paid blame banks for delay. Rivers, again, INEC officer raises alarm over threat to life. And Renara redesign, Nigeria's await presidency, CBN on Supreme Court ruling. That is on page 25. Towards the top of the front page, below the masthead, February 25th, Ayu Okoa Tambwal, other PDP members storm INEC today. And I just here to say, promise of credible governorship election medicine after death, says Atiku. And U.S. Envoy Knox, thumbs up, 20, February 25th polls. Now, these are the major stories on the front page of the Blueprint newspaper. Right, and finally, we'll take a look at uh, Business Day newspaper. The lead story here says five major economic decisions await in Tinubu. And uh, we have on page 37 there, energy sector in tray of Nigeria's next president. Insurers want next president to reflate economy. Uh, Supreme Court ruling on Naira shows president wields limited power, says experts. And more stories here. Manufacturers' confidence in Nigeria's job market hit 21-month low. 
Inbound travelers squeezed on narrow scarcity, and details can be found on page 39. On, on a commentary, uh, Nigeria's election results put disenfranchisement in the spotlight. And at the top of the page there, you have all eyes on CBN after Supreme Court says old Naira notes stay. And these are some of the stories on Business Day newspaper. And with that, uh, we wrap up by uh, reeling out the headlines on the major dailies uh, right here in the nation. Now, uh, let's move on to an analysis of uh, some of these stories. And we have in the studio Dr. Lanre Oluwani, a public affairs analyst, joining us to review some of these stories. Good morning and thank you for joining us, Doctor. Good morning. Good morning. Thank <laughs> it's you a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, let's uh, start by talking about the lead story on Daily Trust newspaper. No. Uh, Nigerians are lamenting hardship. There's still no cash. You have uh, fuel scarcity has actually resurfaced, especially in Abuja. And even traders are, are rejecting, you know, uh, the old Naira notes, you know, even after Supreme Court's ruling. What's your take on, you know, everything going on and what Nigerians are actually facing at the moment? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Uh, I can only say that we need to just need to be patient. Let's give the federal government one or two days because the Supreme Court has ruled and uh, that was on Thursday or so. So let's believe that they will have their meeting today and conclude on way forward. But uh, we are now in a country whereby when the judiciary arm of government rules, it becomes a law automatically. A lot of people are still waiting for President Muhammad Bari to give his own words. Because I can listen to some people yesterday say, ah, yes, yeah, Supreme Court has ruled, we know, but we are still waiting for President Mohamed Bari to say something. But it is quite unfortunate. Uh, executive, they, they could not diverge between executive and judiciary. So Supreme has ruled. We're supposed to, it's supposed to become a law immediately. It has become a law. Yes, but People are still expecting executive to give his own stand. Yeah, because on another paper, it says uh, experts are actually suggesting that it shows the president doesn't really have power, you know, after the Supreme Court rules. Uh, exactly. That's it. It has become a law. So when Supreme rules, it becomes a law automatically. We're supposed to be flowing on that spirit. But we're in a country whereby everybody believes that it's only executive that have the utmost power. So if President Mwambaria have not spoken anything, we still remain handicapped. It's well, not supposed to be. Well, well, most people will actually say that it's because it's due to the precedence. Because we saw a situation whereby the Supreme Court gave an injunction halting the, the, the narrow design policy or the, 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 the cashless policy thing, pending when this judgment was going to be passed. Meaning the old night notes was still supposed to be legal tender within that period. But uh, immediately after that, the presidency came out and said it's only 200 naira that's going to be used as legal tender. The others still remain, um, still will remain banned or something, or, or, or so to speak. So that's why I think people are still of the opinion that they need to see what the president has to say or the CBN has to say first before. before uh, it's not supposed to be so that what I'm saying. Mm. It's not supposed to be so in a normal society. That's the truth. When Supreme Court rules over a judgment on either electioneering that uh, and I declare this governor a winner, did they wait for president to say yes, go on, go and implement it? Did I not wait for Mr. President to, before they implement it? The answer is no. Why must we wait for Mr. President before we proceed on the normal daily activities? With, it's because we are not in a normal society, because there are separate arms of government. And the head of that of judiciary have rule and it has become a law. It's bind on me, it's bind on Mr. President himself. So because the president do otherwise in the last judgment, that makes people to be worried. So and it's not good for our democracy. Okay, All right, so well, we're talking about, uh, we just finished talking about the cash crunch. What about the uh, queues that have resurfaced in petrol stations? Uh, you, you see, you know, all these things, we don't really know, they don't really, nobody really communicate to Nigerian citizen. That's the truth. We have never seen whether the, uh, the EPIMA, PIMA, or Marketa Association, or many, uh, State Minister of Petroleum, because Mr. President is the Minister of Petroleum, where we have a State Petroleum Minister. Have you ever seen one of them talk to us, give us a reason 
why is like this why is like this so they just leave us in a guessing mood we cannot exactly pinpoint where the problem lies some are selling at social price some are selling at another price so nobody is communicated to us so that is what those are the part of things that is not is not supposed to be you are there to communicate the issue to nigerian citizen we are sorry we have a challenge here we have issues there so please bear with us for some sort of social period and everybody will come down before they will tell us marketer but now marketers are not even saying anything all right. Uh, well, let's let's move slightly away from that and uh, to another matter that has been making the rounds. Um, the elections have come <clears throat> come and gone. The winner has been declared. We have a president elect now waiting in the wings to be sworn in. But a lot of things have come in after that. Lots of accusations, counter accusations, and rejections, and and what not what. And now we're hearing making the rounds is that uh, the main opposition party is going to lead a protest march to INEC um, uh, today to to be to protest those results, the results of those presidential elections. Um, what do you think this would be the intent to achieve by doing something like this? Uh, yeah, the issue there is that uh, we have election and a winner has been declared and definitely there is going to be a set of people that they feel aggrieved that the process is not well okay and they are, but uh, I would just advise it's better they channel their energy to, to tribunal because that's a due process. If our due process is not protest after election. The due process is after election and you feel as some you have been subchanged or you are not happy, you are grief, you go to tribunal. There is an open window of tribunal to go and fetch your anger and provide a necessary evidence to prove your allegation. All they say they are doing is like they are jumping the gun. Why must you go on protest when you have not challenged the case in the court? Going on protest is just a, it's just a, instead of them to use that energy to go and prepare for governorship election, so that they will not say they are also rigged again. <laughs> the, the energy you are using to go and protest today, go back home and do planning for next coming election. But if they do next coming election, you say you are rigged again, you do another protest either next week or up week. Does it really make sense? It doesn't really make sense. We need to come to a level as a Nigerian citizen, as a mature nation, that when we must follow process, nobody, nobody needs to tell us. We all know the process. They know the process. They have legal departments. So they should listen to their legal, the legal department people, their lawyers, let us go to the normal process. All this time they are wasting. Is the time they are supposed to write INEC, get all these copies of all these uh, result, original copy of result, uh, BFAS record, everything. Get those things and start preparing your evidence. Okay, but even at that, you know, uh, the INEC has actually, uh, there's a story here that INEC is actually heading to court, you know, to set aside, they're seeking an appeal to set aside an earlier ruling concerning the beavers and other sensitive materials used for the February 25th presidential elections. And this is ahead of the governorship polls as well. Uh, you know why? They, uh, they overrated the work of beavers. Let me put it that way. You know what I mean? They let the National Assembly believe, and we Nigeria citizens believe that when you cast your vote, beaver will send your voting. Voting will be counting, it will send it to server. I do I, I hope you get what I'm saying. That is the that is their thought. I don't know who gave them that narrative. I don't know who they are experts. I don't know how they do it. But that is what they make us believe. And we, I did election observer, both in AKT and Ocean. We knew that it's not like that. What BIFA does is accreditation. That is why they call it by modal verification, uh, very verification accreditation. <laughs> so what BIFA does is to just, you go to the pool, you, instead of, the olden days whereby they accredit you manually and when maybe out of 1,000 register photos in that polling unit, only 300 showed up. And after the election, they'd use this Remy 700 to manipulate 
the election. That is why Beavers comes in. So that when Beavers recorded it, that it's only 300 people that are accredited on this election in this PU. That means any result you are having in that PU cannot more than 300. That's all. That's the only area the Beavers called. But when it comes to the spraying of results, it still goes back to Manwa. Why Manwa? We are for the party agent. Whereby they attest to result on the mayor on the sheet. And that sheet was taken to local government coalition, from local government to state coalition, state coalition to the federal coalition. Well, some are arguing that um, the National Assembly elections, the National Assembly results, most of the, some of them actually found their way onto the server, um, were uploaded during the... Uh, it's error. What's going on? It's error because uh, someone was saying they brought Jigawa, whatever they posted in the reporter court. It's after they get those things at the National Assembly, uh, sorry, at the National Coalition Centre, the resource sheet mm. signed by all the party agents, they start uploading it. Maybe they will upload this river state. This, this, this. So you can go there and check if they are corresponding with what you have in your hand. So out of that, it's human error. It's just only scan and send. They are doing. It's human error. So not that it's nothing like automated uh, result. That's what everybody expects. That really, I cast my foot. There will be a way that I will tell you that I've casted my foot for social party now, and it goes there. You cast your foot, it goes there. No, 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 no. All right, so let's quickly breeze through the City and Crime page on Daily Trust newspaper. That's pages 24 and 25 before we move on to more uh, headline news. Now, uh, we have man backs three years in jail for theft of food stuff. We have NPC nabs man over fraud in Kano. Chrisland school remains shut, says Lagos State Government. Uh, investigate killing of man wearing cloth with my picture for Larin Odger's police. Uh, you can win and still go to jail, Ogun CP tells politicians. Uh, uh, insecurity, Yobe reviews KK Riders' operations. Again, bandits abduct women, kids, nine others from Kaduna community. Police neutralize two kidnappers, rescue victims in Bauchi, and NDLEA nabs India-bound businessman with 9.40 kilograms of heroin in Lagos. Now, uh, these are some of the stories on city and crime. All right, talking about other things now, um, the environment mostly. Um, we saw a story here on uh, Daily Trust saying that um, a rainstorm has actually destroyed some some houses in the community in um, in Ekiti State already. And um, of course, and on the Punch newspaper, we're having a report here that says um, and it's where which we should expect heavy flooding um, in in the country, and that's according to Neymar warning Nigerians about um, um, the floods to come. We're not even in the thick of the rainy season, but we've started seeing things like this. Are we looking at it the right way? Are we taking the right measures to actually do this? I don't think so. Because uh, Neymar is doing their job, and they are focused, and they have seen what is going to be, what is coming, and they have released it to the society. It's not left to leadership of federal state mm. to take them serious and start making measures. But you know, you are in a society whereby if it does not happen, they will not react. Are so, they more preoccupied with elections? Yeah, that does not. The election is one side of governance. So you have commissioner in charge of all these things. So we are in a country whereby election is here. Everybody focus one thing. Must we abandon governance and face electioneering alone? No. Governance should be going pari passo with the election, with the electioneering. So they have commissioner in charge of those things. So immediately he got this information in any furious state. They're supposed to be serious about it. Check their environment, especially some states that are prone to flooding. So we hope so that they will do so. We cannot conclude yet. And we believe we are just charging them to do so if they have not. So that is their responsibility. So that there will not be chaos. And at the end of the day, you start running, asking for relief. Asking for the other state. But they have given a warning now. And nobody will refer back to this when it happened. All right, let's take a look at uh, a story uh, on Daily Trust that says analysts seek petrol subsidy removal, tax, 
exchange rate reform and a similar story on the punch newspaper that says fuel and forex subsidies removal will save federal government 10 trillion naira and this is according to report do you agree with this and if yes what do you think or where do you think they can channel this 10 trillion naira to to be able to ease the burden that uh, you know uh, the removals would actually uh, like the hardships that it will cost on nigerians well i think uh, nigeria need to to be prepared because definitely they are everybody have agreed what i mean by everybody even all the presidential candidates and later i think i don't need to talk about presidential candidate again the president-elect has already said it in his blueprint that he's going to remove subsidy so subsidy is going and people don't understand that when subsidy goes we are not buy, going to be buying for at the rate of 195 again okay. they should prepare that okay. they should prepare their mind because it's federal government that are paying for the little money that make them to be buying at 195 they should prepare their mind now that as it may be if they remove subsidy let us see good governance let us see standard infrastructure and let us see our education system growing up let us see our public health going up so that you will not keep going because it's the subsidy that they are using as an excuse because the subsidy that we are giving, it has taken a chunk of our allocation, our budgetary allocation every year. So, and we are servicing debt, with even with allocation. So, if they do that, they should let us, when, they, when we are buying for, maybe we are buying for the age of 300 naira or 350, and people are seeing good governors at the other side, they will not complain. If you are buying for the age of 350 naira, and you are seeing your electricity being constant. Will you need to go and be buying generator? Will you need to go and be buying fuel for generator? You no. Know, you only know that you are only buying fuel for your car. That will not be double expenses. So remove the subsidy, fine. But channel your energy to what you know that is going to be of benefit, of great benefit to the Nigeria system, especially the power sector. Okay. All right, now, um, in the build-up to the presidential and national assembly elections, one of the major things that a lot of people kept talking about was the issue of insecurity. And um, towards uh, the, during the period of the election, fortunately, there was not, the, we didn't have the total breakdown of security that a lot of people actually thought might happen. And there was a lull in, in the activities of, of these bandits and miscreants and, and whatnot. What. But immediately after that, now we're seeing a bit of an uptick in, in, in the number of cases that we're hearing, specifically coming in from Zamfara and, um, and, 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 and Borno states. What can you attribute to this? Uh, you know... Uh, you know, there is, there is something they said that there, there is some people behind something. So, <laughs> when the election is, you notice that before even the election, about two months or so to the election, you cannot hear any story of insecurity, banditry, kidnaps, or so person. You will, we hardly had of something like that for the last two months now. So, we all believe that maybe, well, there are some people somewhere that say, come on that you guys have to calm down. And uh, when we true, <laughs> yeah, I don't see, I don't have the facts, mm. <laughs> but I'm just guessing. <laughs> but uh, but uh, to tell you that it's our military mm. that went and calm there, I don't know, but they know best. But uh, my appeal, it can only appeal, my appeal to the people, to the men that be, that they believe uh, in this nation and that uh, they should allow peace to reign. That is how we can only appeal. They should allow peace mm. to reign. And they should allow the military to do their work. And uh, if we have any form of banditry around or insecurity left and right, they should find a way of solving it. Because if you check deep on all these issues, benefit that cause issue, they are economic issues. Mm, especially in Sanfara. That's the truth. That what happened is a tussle. And some of them may even be political, which I'm sure of. So that is why you see before the election, something calmed down. After the election, they blew up. <laughs> so please, we can only appeal. All right, so let's take a look at uh, a story the nation carried of Nigeria's debt 
hitting 50 trillion naira now uh, despite you know the high debt uh, profile of the nation you know the government has actually said it will still not stop borrowing what's your take on this uh, actually there is nothing bad in borrowing yes we are just in the part of the world that uh, any things that is string to us we look as if as big things you know it's not a bd are you getting it but what you borrow to do is what's important yes there is nothing bad in borrowing as a nation as a state even as an individual but what you borrow money to do is very important to us do you borrow money to uplift nigeria from poverty do you borrow money to give to do some infrastructure that are long time benefit are you getting it so like all this railway we are having the borrow money to do all this railway are they good for yes are they going to service the law for 30 years yes after we have gone our children are going to still, still going to be using it are you getting it it's a good borrowing are you getting it do not tell me that they will not borrow they will borrow until they get themselves stabilized so far, they still have open window of borrowing because either it's a level you will borrow, that what bank will even stop you. That with your economy, with what you are doing, you are not eligible to borrow. And then we tell all the countries that are borrowing you money that they are not in support of any money borrowing. Because you must be aware, before you borrow money from any country, there is intermediary, which is World Bank and IMF. They must put their seal on it. They must sit down with it. What are you borrowing money for? How are you going to pay it? So the country that is borrowing money can be saved. So people should know that. So borrowing is not a bad thing. It's not a big deal. But what are you borrowing money for? So when we reach our peak, I think they will tell us to start thinking inward how to generate more revenue from our country. Well, should we wait till we get there? I think that's where they are going. Uh, wish. I will advise the new president elect to look inward and see how they can generate more revenue here than borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. That's the issue. That's the only solution. Until we start producing stuff for subsidy, get more refineries, because if you don't get more refineries, you will still be exporting crude oil. I mean, importing refined products. That won't cost us a lot of money. So until we get more refineries, whereby all the PMS we are using in Nigeria is being refined here. When it's refined here, we are okay. We can only export and get more money into the country. And let us see how we can bring more investors, especially of production. So if we can bring more investors on production in this country, it's a, good, it's a, it's a very good thing to do. Because the more you produce, the higher you generate more revenues because we are not producing anything in this country virtually nothing all the textile industry is done done up is no longer here Michelin is no longer here these are producing com uh, company that are giving us a lot of money contributing a lot of um, money to our GDP but they are no longer here go to Akmen Road go to Oba Akra in Lagos they are no longer there. They have turned all those factories to church. All right, so briefly before you leave, uh, there's uh, this uh, human interest story on Blueprint newspaper of uh, an incident that happened in Anambra State where a domestic worker cuts off a woman's genitals for money rituals. Uh, kindly comment on that. Man, it's only good. <laughs> you know, you know, this... This news to me is not new. Yeah, it's not new. It's some of the news that we know that is rampant over there. So I believe the the security people should do the needful and let we can continue this way. That's the truth. We can continue this way. Some of them will blame it on the federal government that the, the federal government is not doing anything. We don't have job. We don't. We don't have job. You don't have something to do, that does not stop, that does not make you to commit crime. So, and that does not feel that you can use somebody else to get what you need. So, we condemn it in totality, but we enjoy the police officer in that area to do their job, but uh, it's not a new case as far as that case, that place is concerned. That is, has been, you know, there is um, uh, 
there are some stories that uh, let me put it this way, there are some stories that uh, is not uh, on the uh, on the open mm. that has been taking place for many years. You remember sometimes that they discover some people are thinking of your state that they are keeping people somewhere. Mm. Keep people somewhere, baby factory. Yeah, they discover later in Oyo State, discover somewhere in, in, the, in the South, South, Port Harcourt, whatever. These are things that are happening in our society. That uh, we need more volunteers on the field to unravel all these things. But we are not yet there. That's the truth because uh, the only media house cannot do it. We need some independent journalists that they can took it upon the person. This is what I want to be focusing on. This is what I want to be telling, are you getting, they will get the stories, get everything, get the fact, give it to the media house, give it to the police, and uh, society become more, but a lot of those things are happening, a lot. All right, well, uh, thank you, doctor, for analyzing the uh, news with us this uh, morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. It. All right, so that was Dr. Larry Oluani, public affairs uh, analyst, joining us to review the headlines on uh, the dailies this morning. And with that, uh, we'll take a breather. And when we return at the top of the hour, daybreak continues. But the situation where you find that they look like the same. It's not necessarily uh, tribal or regional.